circuit imply rc circuit we have dealt with some questions involving battery and capacitor and also battery and resistance what happens if a circuit has both resistance as well as capacitance so that's the topic for the uh, this week and uh, once we finish this topic this chapter of current electricity gets over so let's get going with the topic of rc circuit okay what is an rc circuit this is how an rc circuit a simplest case of rc circuit would look like this is single loop single loop what you find here there are three electrical elements here there is emf up here and a, a battery is connected to a sorry a capacitor is connected to battery and whenever uh, and we have known already we have it already and whenever a capacitor is connected to battery it also acquires a charge in a such a fashion the potential difference across capacitors becomes equal to eventually potential difference across or emf of the battery okay so uh, but it may take some time let's try and understand what happens so how much time does it take and how this charging takes place it is not something which is instantaneous it has some time duration so whenever we connect a battery to a capacitor it will have a lead wire and all forming a loop so what does r represent here r represents uh, the resistance in the entire loop this r could be external resistance it could be it also mean the resistance of the lead wire or it could also be uh, internal resistance or sum of all three. so r is a uh, resistance of the loop of our entire thing put together and since all are connected in series entire thing can be represented by one resistor so this is circuit as a battery and this we call a charging circuit so when we connect like this uh, the battery uh, capacitor will get charged the process of charging takes finite time and uh, during the charging process there is a flow of charge from battery to capacitor and since there is a flow of charge there is a current in the connecting or the lead wire and uh, during the charging process as the current is flowing current is not constant and this, uh, during this charging process also uh, as we have seen before so whatever this applied voltage or battery voltage gets divided into two parts during charging process it gets shared as some potential drop across the resistance and remaining part capacitor potential drop across the capacitor so source voltage gets divided between capacitor and the resistor That's what happens during charging process. So let's see what happens soon after the battery is connected. As soon as the battery is connected, uh, we know uh, potential difference across capacitors depend on the charge. Initially, when it's connected in uncharged state, potential difference difference across capacitor is zero, or I use the word voltage. Voltage across C is zero. So what happens? Where does this go? Uh, this entire voltage is across the resistance. Current will be high. So entire potential is available to resistor as soon as the battery is connected. But as an as a, this start acquiring charge, so let's say some some stage you have taken this as charge, and at that particular instance the current is high. So we have taken an intermediate state during the charging process. So as the charge on the capacitor increases gradually, the potential across the resistor also will decrease. So as so this get as this share becomes higher, potential drop across resistance will decrease, and as the potential drop across resistance will decrease, the current also will decrease. And let's understand what is happening in this process. And this process typically what is happening uh, the charge if you understand in terms of charge flow, charge positive charge is getting transferred from the plate connecting negative plate to charge is getting transferred from negative. Bit of capacitor connected to negative terminal to positive terminal. This is how the charge transfer takes place. So the charge is starting from here. Positive charge flows all across, including between the terminals of the battery, uh, and then like this, and it reaches here. Only thing there is no current between the plates. Otherwise, the charge flows from here. So whatever if charge Q goes out, uh, if the charge Q goes out, this acquires a charge minus Q, and this acquires a plus Q, and gradually the charge transfer keeps taking place. That's how the charge flows, and as the charge is flowing, entire part of the loop will have current, and the current will be what? Current will be the rate of charge flow. Okay, so uh, let's see by how we formulate an equation. And this case, we notice it's not a steady state; it will keep changing with time. 
So since it is not a studied state, okay, let's look at what, uh, what would that mean. When capacitor is fully charged, what would happen? When capacitor gets fully charged, potential across the capacitor or voltage across the capacitor will be equal to MF of the battery. In this case, there's no voltage across the resistance, current will drop to zero. So current will start, have a maximum value, and gradually it will decrease to zero. So that is what we can infer without even writing any equation. We can infer that as soon as the battery is connected, initially entire voltage is available for the resistors, current is maximum. But as and when the charge gets transferred, whatever charge, see, what is the charge transfer here? The charge transfer will equal to IDT. Whatever current is flowing, the current is getting deposited. So all charge which is flowing in form of current, it gets deposited on the positive plate. What is the charge at a particular instance? Summation of charge flow is equal to charge acquired by the positive plate, which will be equal to IDT. We'll see that later. So uh, this is what happens in case of uh, RC circuit. So broadly, this, this is what we can interpret or infer based on our understanding of current electricity so far, based on understanding of battery, resistor, and capacitor. Let's look at, uh, let's say, say as it is a, uh, something not constant, we have to take up. So at any time t, so we are taking during the charging process, some time t, we have assumed that time t is equal to zero, the battery is connected. So at time t, let the current be i. And so uh, we take a snapshot at a particular instance of time. At that time, the charge is plus, charge in the capacitor is q, which means positive plate has plus q, and this is minus q. And at that particular instance, current is i. So if we take a very small time interval dt, in during very small time interval, what is the time we are taking from? Time from t to t plus dt. That's the time interval. From, so t to t plus dt. That's the time interval dt. During this process, what happens? This is a, uh, uh, all charge which is flowing from here, all charge which is crossing this cross section. Entire charge which is crossing this cross section lead wire connecting to the positive plate of the capacitor, all charge passing through will get deposited on the plate of the capacitor. How much change in charge on the capacitor takes place? So charge will get deposited on the capacitor, thereby increasing the charge by dq. What is the increase in charge in time dt? That will be equal to i into dt. That's the charge flow. So charge during this time interval dt, charge on the capacitor increases by i dt. So basically, the uh, how quickly the charge will improve, increase will depend on the current. If the current is large, it means uh, the charge is getting deposited on the capacitor at a fast rate. If current is low, the rate of deposition of charge on capacitor will be lower. So in this case, uh, at any instance, Kirchhoff loop rule is valid. So we apply Kirchhoff loop rule here. Let's apply what is the Kirchhoff loop rule here. If you apply, uh, okay. If I start from here, let's see, I start from here, go around like this. As I move from, from negative plate to positive plate of capacitor, uh, there's increase of potential Q by C. I'm moving against the current, hence the plus sign, plus IR. And then finally, I move from positive terminal to negative terminal, minus E is equal to zero. That's the differential equation we use to solve RC circuit. What does I stand for here? I is equal to dq by dt. So this equation is like this, dq by dt. And uh, there are two variables here. Two things are changing. And they are dependent on each other. Uh, they are interrelated quantity. Two and t are related quantities. These two things are differential equation variables, uh, charge and time. So uh, what we do, and this is a differential equation, we can solve with very simple integration techniques. What we do here, we rearrange the term here. So I is equal to dq by dt. One more equation if I want, I could have written like this also, q by c. Is plus i in place of i, I can write dq by dt. Okay, and this is equal. So sorry, so what is dq by dt equal to? So dq by dt, if I take it to other side, it becomes equal to r dq by dt, and then they take the denominator. This is r what equation leads to. Uh, I could have written one more step here if you uh, have anybody has an issue. dq by dt is equal to dc minus q by c. 
And this equation we get. So if I had to integrate this equation, the Q terms have to be one side and the T term to other side. So uh, what is the equation I can write here? So we bring this term here. It becomes equal to DQ by EC minus Q. And this one becomes other term one by CR. What are the limits of integration? This is, we know what is the state at time t is equal to zero is, this initial state is known. So we integrate it from zero to term time t. At that instance, charge is equal to Q. And as we integrate, all of you can integrate this one. So can you try and find the value of Q? I'll give a minute. Can you find charge Q as a function of time by simple integration? It's a definite integration very easy to integrate. So all of you try and find the value of charge Q. You are interested in finding what is the charge Q at time T. So when we solve this equation, integrate, we'll get Q as a function of time. So all of you can try and do that. This is a simple integration. First, you understand where this equation comes from. This equation comes from uh, top loop rule. And we just rearrange the term, I is equal to dQ by dt. And we end up with this relationship. And if we integrate, we get R as a function of time. You get R. Integration of this term. Now tell me what is the integration of this? All of you recall what is the, how do you understand what is the integration of this term? Log. Uh, basically, yes, we basically log. So by that integration is log. Uh, my, minus. Basically, then we get divided by, but then again, we differentiate this term. This is minus term. So this is minus. Minus. Term. minus okay. So this is the limit or what you can do since it is minus i can uh, uh, remove the minus sign and uh, change this limit here this can be written as log, log of ec minus q and i can yeah, to change the limits it becomes equal to zero to q and when you substitute and we can have similarly other one is pretty simple so if we rearrange this term what we get here okay that's a log of ec minus q and uh, we substitute and we rearrange the term. Uh, so uh, what is this term equal to? This term becomes equal to, uh, or you can write one more step, we can write EC minus Q, P minus Q divided by EC equal to minus T by TR or RC. And this is uh, log. So we take the log, it's, uh, what is the, uh, the function of this? This it becomes exponent one minus by EC is equal to E s power minus T by RC. So we can easily get the value of Q. We are in the term here. So we get Q is equal to the same equation you get. So it's a very simple uh, manipulation. So Q is equal to EC into 1 minus E raised to power minus T by RC. That's the equation we get here. And sometimes EC can be also written as Q naught. Yes, Akash, you have any question? Yes, sir. E to the power uh, minus uh, T by RC. So, what will be the units of that? Yes, we'll come to that part. So, see, whenever we have sine function, when we write sine of any physical quantity, what is the expansion of sine x? All of you recall what is the expansion of sine x? Yes, sir. Uh, Something like this. What will be the dimension here? So any sine x term, this is, this is, or what is the expansion of cos x? Something like this. So all terms, if it is a physical quantity, this quantity is dimensionless. It means x also has to be dimensionless. Any sine function, argument of sine function, any trigonometrical function, argument of exponent, all quantities have to be dimensionless. So this quantity here, this quantity also, if it is a, this is a physical quantity, this has to be dimensionless. We'll come to that part of this quantity. What is the dimensionless quantity? It means whatever dimension T has, RC also has to have same dimension. We'll come to that part. RC will have same dimension as T dimension, which is same. Because then dampening also has this also. Uh... Yes, actually dampening also same thing happens. So whenever we have any quantity, whenever we have log quantity, exponent quantity, whatever quantity we'll have, that quantity will be a dimensionless term. This expansion has one constant term. If one term is constant, this has no dimension. Any other term also should have no dimension. That's expansion of e to power x. So one term is dimensionless. It means all terms must be dimensionless or x also must be dimensionless. So wherever you come across is a dimensionless quantity. So this is something I think uh, not a complex uh, So we come q equal to ec1 minus e to the power minus t by rc. And today our focus is to understand this equation. 
understand the equation is important uh, the target for today and what is q not ec is equal to ec also we write as q not we see why we write as q not that's the final charge and what is tau here so sometimes this term rc is written as tau yes vignesh no sir i had a doubt in what is q not it's the charge when it attains the state yeah we'll come to that part ec can be written as q not we'll again we'll come to next see basically okay. i will spend next half an hour trying to understand this expression this expression is not a nice a nice one doesn't look very nice one Okay, now nothing. All this exponent. So exponent term, we not we are, don't have very intuitive understanding of what exponent means. We'll spend a little time. So what we notice here, what we have done here, we'll come to that also. Why we do that? EC has been written as sometimes we can EC is also can we write as Q not. And other thing, this RC term is written as tau. So tau is equal to what? Tau is called a time constant. We'll come to that again in the next slide. And time constant is equal to RC. That's the expression we get. Now we'll try to make sense of this expression. It's a mathematical expression. But now let's again make sense, understanding this equation. So I have rewritten that equation here. So this equation we get. Let's try what does this equation mean? Because what we have understood from a logical understanding is what happens at time t is equal to zero, what will happen after long time when the capacitor is fully charged, and in between the current has to decrease. So let's try and understand here what does initial state mean? Let's try this understand what if, if uh, what is initial state t is equal to zero. So t is equal to zero, I can find a substitute t is equal to zero in this equation. If I substitute t is equal to zero in this equation, two becomes equal to EC. Sorry, uh, uh, sorry, t is equal to zero, this term becomes equal to one, one minus one, it becomes zero. What are this t is equal to zero in, in, in uh, result in t is equal to zero when I substitute, I find the charge is equal to zero. Which makes sense. Initially, it is not charged. That's the limit of our integration. Okay. Second thing, if you have to find out what is rate of charging of current, can you find out current from this equation? I have found how charge will vary as function of time. Can we also find out how would current vary as function of time? What will current be equal to? dq by dt. So what is dq by dt? First term is a constant, ec. It is ec minus ec into e raised power minus t by tau. And uh, you know uh, what is it? Uh, Derivative of this. When we differentiate, so d by dt of actually d by dt of okay. So when when you can we differentiate this term? All of you can you find the derivative of this term? What is dq by dt? It is very simple derivative. I think all of you should be able to find. What is dq by dt be equal to? dq by dt will equal to uh, first time I'm omitting this will be equal to d by dt of minus ec raised to power minus t by tau. What is that equal to? Is equal to something e raised to power minus fx. What is this derivative? This will be ec. Yeah, t by tau by ec tau. e to the power minus t by tau. Minus one by tau. And what is tau equal to? Tau is equal to rc. So rc when you substitute rc, uh, c gets cancelled. What is left is e by r e raised to power minus t by tau. That's the value of current. E by R, E raised to power minus T by 2 is the rate of charging or current. At T is equal to 0, it is equal to E by R. So what you understood? Does anybody have any query? This is a simple derivative. So what is initial current? Initial current is E by R, which makes sense. What happens initially? The circuit behaves as if there's no capacity. E by R would have been current if there was only resistor. So initially, I can think, how does the circuit behaving? Initially, it behaves as if capacitor is not there. Capacitor is almost shorted, okay? The initial went as if capacitor is absent or shorted. That's how you can visualize initial state as soon as battery is connected. And reason why capacitor takes no part, because initially charge is zero, and there's no potential difference. Entire potential difference or entire applied voltage is available across the register. What about t is equal to infinity? In this equation, if you substitute t is equal to infinity, it becomes 1 by e raised to higher. Yes, Akash. What happens if you substitute t is equal to infinity? The capacitor gets completely charged. It's going to infinity. I'm just, now we are not using, we are just substituting in the equation. If t is equal to infinity, if I substitute t is equal to infinity, this expression becomes equal to what? It will become equal to q naught. 1 minus 
1 by e to the power infinity. What is in this term also? It will be what is e equal to sum of two. Remember, e is equal to roughly 2.73. It is number greater than one is to infinity. This number will become infinite. It become equal to q naught, or it will come to e c. Okay, so charge on the capacitor is equal to e c, and uh, when charge is equal to e c, it becomes fully charged. So okay, hmm. that's the final state. Rate of charging. Okay, I think this is wrong. The current should be zero, right, sir? The yeah, current is zero. I think this is just copied from here, so I didn't delete this part. So current I will become equal to zero at that state. Sir? Yes. Sir, I didn't understand why the capacitor will get fully charged. Huh? Why? Why does it get fully charged? You see, plus what will happen to uh, as soon as you connect the battery? If uh, does it make sense uh, the voltage of the battery would be equal to sum of voltage across resistance and the capacitor or not? Yes, sir. So does it make sense as soon as we connect the battery initially the current will start flowing across the resistance? Yes. Yeah. Also makes sense. Current will start flowing, and when the current flows here like this, this current, this charge which is reaching here, can this charge cross to this side? Minus charge, whatever charge is flowing through the wire, ultimately where it is getting ended up, it is getting deposited, it is being taken away from the this plate. Is being deposited yes. on the positive plate. Okay, so what is yes. happening as more and more charge gets deposited, the potential across the capacitor keeps rising. This potential across the resistance will keep on decreasing, and eventually, what will happen as if something keeps rising and something keeps decreasing, it is getting shared between the two, and there will come to a state when this potential keep rising ultimately becomes equal to E. More it becomes equal to E, what would happen? The potential drop across the resistance becomes zero. If this becomes zero, then flow will stop. So does it without using mathematical expression? Can we come to this logical deduction, sir? So till there is a potential drop across the resistance R, current will keep flowing, right, sir? Current keep or current will keep flowing. Yes, sir. understood, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I hope the logical sequence. Mother, if we have to think step by step what is happening, I hope the logical sequence. Entire thing is based on the fact that there are three elements here. Battery is a source of voltage. And these two, this voltage of the battery get distributed into two parts. One is across the resistor, other is across the capacitor. Voltage across capacitor depends on the charge. So as soon as when the capacitor is not charged, it has zero charge here. But voltage of the battery, entire voltage is applied to the resistor. Hence the current starts flowing. And that's the time when the current flow is maximum. And current flow is equal to what? Charge flow. Charge it flows from here. It, uh, it takes away charge from the plate, uh, from the plate connected to negative terminal. And this charge moves in the circuit like this. And whatever charge which is flowing into this plate here cannot cross. The so cumulative charge flow is the charge on the positive plate of the capacitor. Cumulative charge flow is equal to charge on the positive plate of the capacitor. Okay, it keeps depositing here. As the charge and capacitor keeps increasing, this potential keeps increasing, this potential keeps dropping. So finally, what is the final state? Potential drop across capacitor becomes equal to potential of the battery. And potential drop across resistors becomes zero and will come to stop. And same expression, and this is the value of rate of current. And moment is substitute is equal to infinity uh, but, uh, if it uh, I becomes equal to zero. If this becomes equal to one by e raised to power infinity, or current is equal to zero. Final current, even for mathematical expression, also, yes, of course, it needs to be lead to the same conclusion. That's what the equation indicates, and in between the charge keeps on increasing. So no current. So finally, what happens? If finally, it behaves. There's no current here. So in charge, charge state, it behaves like an open circuit. Or uh, if I have to imagine this capacitor, capacitor, the circuit behaves like an open circuit. Or capacitor offers. You can think of since there's no current uh, flowing in this branch, you can think of capacitor as equivalent to infinite resistance. When does it happen? When it's fully charged. So. We can think of capacitor. We'll come across some question soon after battery is connected. It offers zero resistance, and after long time, when it gets fully charged, it behaves as an infinite resistance. This behave we can other word which is commonly used. Initially, it behaves as if it is shorted, and finally, it behaves as an infinite resistance or open circuit. That's what happens initially. And finally, in between, the charge increases. So so far, anybody has any question?
So sir? this expression, yes. Sir, so ideally the capacitor will never get charged, right? Fully charged. Hey, we will we'll come to that part, but the basically you will think, yes, whether we look at it, it's time taken is infinity. We will deal with that also. We will see what does it mean. It will, it will, you know, you're done asymptote. So, so what is that, yeah, we'll come to that part. Yes, theoretically, how much time does it take to acquire full charge? Theoretically, infinite time. But how much time will it take to acquire 99% charge? That will be finite. Are you getting my point here? What did you say? To Acquire charge C. How much time it will take? It will take infinite time. But how much time it will take to acquire a charge equal to 0.999 EC? That will be finite time. The time will be finite. So it will get, we can find it will get almost fully charged. But how much time it takes to get fully charged theoretically? Infinite time. That is correct. But we'll get yes. Is there a reason for that, sir? This expression, you look at that. I mean, like, not mathematically. Uh -huh. Is there a way to understand why it was fully charged? See, what will happen if, if some two things are balanced out? What will happen? See, uh, at uh, after, when it is something, when the, it has acquired a charge like this, what is the current flow in the circuit in that case? It will be very small. It will be very small. It's so like this, it is almost full. Water is coming in trickles. So charge which is getting added will be so slow, it will take long time. And as you keep adding more charge, the rate at which charge is getting added gets slower and slower. Yes. So that's why, that's the, yes, logically also it makes sense. As it gets terribly slow, it becomes infinitely small, rate of charge addition. Then what happens is it will take almost infinite time. There are a few other examples also I think you think of and let you know. Uh, few other experiences also it may happen. So okay. intermediate charge state, charge keeps increasing and decreasing. Does this word make sense? Charge keeps increasing at decreasing rate. What does this mean? What does this mean? Say, why are you saying at a decreasing rate? Why have you used the word in intermediate state? The charge will keep increasing at decreasing rate. Gatri, can you tell me why I have used the word decreasing rate? Do you understand the meaning of this statement? Gatri? Can you, do you understand meaning of this statement? Do you understand where, what is the logic behind this statement? Charge sir, will keep increasing. Uh, sir, at my initial rate. state, uh, hmm? sir, my initial state, uh, the current is uh, current is more. So decreasing rate depends on the current. As the per this potential becomes more, this becomes smaller. Current keeps getting decreasing, and current is nothing but rate of charging. So it will, current will keep decreasing. Okay, I hope so. Most will follow that part. So, uh, again, let's look at in terms of suppose I have to plot this expression. It's a mathematical relationship. I can find a plot between if I want to get a visual understanding. If this is charge Q here and this is okay. If I plot for mathematically, I can calculate different points. If I plot, it comes something like this. This is the shape how charge will vary. As, as you know, what will happen? It will approach EC asymptotically. Okay, this takes time. So let's try and understand this expression even more. This term called time constant. Now let's try and understand because the time it will take this term time constant. Why it is called a time constant? Because it has same dimension as that of time. Okay. This term has to be dimensionless is the ratio of the two. So if you calculate also, what is the dimension of term RC? If I calculate dimension of term RC, whatever formula I know, I don't have to check, but it will come equal to time T. Let's try and understand what is the significance of this term tau. See, uh, even before we do so, just think of it, suppose rather than having resistance R, in place of R, if I, I don't change capacitor, I don't change battery. If I change R to 2R, then what will happen? If I change, if I change R to, suppose I have made R is equal to 10R, increase the resistance substantially. What do you think will happen? Will the final charge the capacitor change? No, sir. Final charge will not change. Something will change. What would change here? And the tau, uh, tau value. No, the, what else? When the rate thing of charging. Will, what, uh, what, what, what will happen? See, when the current becomes more, see, when the resistance becomes more, then the current also becomes smaller. 
If the current becomes smaller, it will take mm -hmm. more time to get it fully charged. What happened? Time for charging will get longer. So we see that expression. That's what logically also I think it makes sense. Let's see in terms of interpretation of this equation. Okay. So this is time constant. Let's try understand why it is called time constant. I hope all of you understood. Time constant because it has a dimension of time and it has some understanding. Let's say what is the charge at time t is equal to tau. So we can can you find charge at time t is equal to tau? How do you find? We can substitute in place of t equal to tau. So what will be q at what will be the charge at time t is equal to tau? Let's put this value E C 1 minus 1 by E. That will be the charge. And what is the value of E? Value of E is equal to 2.73. If I substitute this value e is equal to 2.73, the ratio becomes 1.73 divided by 2.73, it becomes equal to 0.63 EC. So one way to understand tau is tau is time or capacitor to acquire 0.63 of final charge or tau is the time so if this is the time t is equal to tau here if time is t is equal to tau if final charge is ec what will the charge at that instance at the charge at that instance will be 0.63 times of final charge value so what is one way to understand time constant time constant indicates time taken in seconds for capacitor to acquire 63% over the final charge. Another way to understand is equal to time that it would have taken to charge it fully if initial rate of charging was continued. Let's understand what does it mean. What is the initial rate of charging? All you recall, initial rate of charging is what? Initial rate of charging is equal to I was equal to how much? C by E by R. E by R. So how much time would, so suppose same rate was continued what we find here rate of charging keeps on decreasing had we continued same time how much time it would have taken to acquire full charge if we suppose same rate of charge continue for time t the charge full charge is equal to ec so what is the value of time how much time would have taken in that case the time taken would have been rc so tau is the time had initial rate of charging if i draw a tangent here if I draw a tangent at which point? At origin. Where would tangent go and meet this, this is the point? Which point? That is T0. So T0 is uh, uh, time constant. The two is three things we understood. Hopefully. What are three things? The reason it is called time constant, it has a dimension of time. Second thing, time constant affects rate of charging. Time constant indicates time taken to acquire 63% of total charge. Third way we can understand time constant, if initial rate of charging were to continue, it would have taken time equal to time constant to acquire the full charge. Ati? Sir? Are you following so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All three points. So time constantly understood the math. You see, basically, what are we trying to do so far? We are trying to uh, understand this expression. So we are, we are now right now. I am exploring this. What is the significance of tau? I hope this point is understood in all three ways. Why we call it time constant? It affects rate of charging. I can understand in terms of time taken to acquire 63 percent of the final charge is the time constant. If tau becomes longer, it will take more time to acquire this charge. So, okay. Let's try and understand the next part. If the register R is replaced with R, what will happen? Keeping E and C as same. What will happen to time constant if I replace R with R? Uh, uh, initial current will become I by 2. So initial current also. So, basically, what will happen? So, can you visualize how this curve will change? This curve I have drawn for what? This curve is drawn for resistance R. Can you visualize the curve for 2R? How would charging curve change? Can you all try and think in your mind. Can you draw in your own notebook? How would this curve change? We move to the right, right, sir. Like yes. First thing you see, what I look at, whenever you charge the curve, initial point, will the initial point change? Initial point is zero charge. Will the final charge change? The slope will be lower. 
you see there are three parts the starting point end point and the slope so first the starting point is not changing is the uh, final point change final charge is ec i am not changing capacitor battery i am not changing capacitor so this curve will uh, be asymptotic to this line okay but uh, let's see in terms of uh, okay the final charge is same earlier it was changing some time now the time constant has become double what does it mean how much time will take to acquire a charge equal to 0.63 ec it will not take now time it will take time to take it down the curve will pass from here not from here the second curve will pass from this point how would the shape of the curve will look like that's all the shape less slope what is happening now it is taking more time to get fully charged i don't know are you to understand what is this point here located if uh, r becomes 2r uh, this uh, uh, this uh, time value also becomes double if r becomes 5r it will become like this it will be very very flat that's the significance of tau have you all understood what is the effect of change of time constant on the curve the one which has large time constant has flat slope this indicates large value of time and this one as it is smaller it becomes more steep charging is faster okay final charge will remain same but time constant will double so time taken to reach 0.63 times of final charge will be twice as long so we hope you understood time constant we understood by this rate of charging initial rate of charging it will keep decreasing final rate of charging will go zero final charge will be ec and initially the capacitor will behave like it is shorted finally it will behave like an open circuit so these are points you understood and let me repeat what are point what are things we should have understood here what are things you know this something is as soon as we connect the battery initially the capacitor will behave like it is shorted it will offer no resistance Entire voltage will be across the resistor. So current in that case will be equal to E by R, which is the rate of charging. As whatever cumulative charge flow gets deposited on the capacitor, as the charge on the capacitor keeps increasing, voltage across resistance will keep decreasing. As the current will keep decreasing, rate of charge also will keep decreasing. But the final charge will be equal to E into C. Okay, final charge will reach equal to E C. So uh, when you look at the curve. Finally, it has to approach E by C, and the time taken will depend on if we replace the resistance. If the resistance is high, it makes sense. Rate of charging becomes slower. It will take more time to acquire whatever value of charge. The whole curve will get shifted towards right. If the resistance becomes smaller, whole curve is shifted towards left. What will happen if I replace C by C by two, keeping R same? So uh, I'm keeping E and C as same. E and C unchanged. Both are E and C. Sorry, uh, E and R are same, and un this is unchanged. And this time, uh, I'm replacing R with R by two. What will happen? So let me ask some. Uh, uh, what will happen, Anish? Can you tell me what would happen if I replace resistance with R by two? E and C are unchanged, sir. Uh, sorry, E and R are unchanged. Anish, sorry, 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 and if i make cs say suppose cs made as c by 2 what change will happen in the curve anish can you tell me something what are, what whatever comes to mind what changes will happen in the curve it will take less time to charge so what that's only thing comes to your mind what else what else will happen in the curve This initial slope. Uh, there's a final charge. The shape of the curve. What is the final? It will move to the left. First of all, the curve. Will the curve reach same value of y? I will reach a different value of y. Different same. value. 
Uh, yeah, for different values. Different values. Why? Because final charge also, if the capacitance will become half, keeping the battery same, it means final charge also will become half. Where will it? This first of all, final charge will not be EC. Final charge will be EC. And uh, initial rate of charging. Will the initial rate of charging be same or different? If I draw the curve, initially will the curve have the same slope or will it have a different slope? Yeah, same. same. Because E by R is same. By R is same. The curve will start with the same slope. Finally, it has reached this value. The shape we made something like this. It will start with the same slope. Uh, Understand why the slope is same and uh, uh, how this changes. If I have to draw, first thing I understood, the curve will not go as high as it was going in the previous case. But initially, the curve slope will be same, so very quickly it will charge and show, show me something like this. Initial slope same, that, that may be something like this. Sir, what was the actual expression for tau, sir, which we got? RC. RC. Yes. So, this is the final charge. Final charge will be EC by 2. If I take 0.63 of EC by 2, how much time it will take for 0.63 EC by 2? This is the final charge. 0.63 times of it. Will it take same time turn out or it is taking less time or more time? Tau by two. Yeah, it will take half, half the time. Half the time. Well, you see, basically, are we doing anything significant? We are just looking at the expression. The formula is there. We are trying to understand the formula in different context. And if we understand, that helps our improve our understanding. Okay. So I hope we got some sense of it. Let's see, uh, we put the formula into use in terms of some simple questions. Let's uh, all of you read this question. And yeah, Alad, you have some question? Yes, sir. Tau by two, we will get different value of charge, right? Yes. If, what I uh, tau by two corresponding to which point I have marked? I have marked 160 times of the final charge. So if I take the y coordinate corresponding to y coordinate of 0.63 final charge EC by 2, what is the time when uh, the time will be equal to half the not? Any problem this Allah that if, uh, I thought this pretty clear? No. Sir, so, uh, right. If we take a q equals EC times 1 minus 1 by E for 1 by 2, mm -hmm. very different value of that. Right? No, you'll get the same thing. Would you get different value? You just see that one. Whatever may be the shape of the curve, but what will happen, the Q naught will change. So as long as if at whenever P is equal to tau, this expression will always come equal to 0.63. It has nothing to do. So in this equation, I again, again repeat the point here. What I'm saying now, if P is equal to tau, this expression will always be same. How much this expression will come to? Always 0.63. For any circuit, if the time is equal to time constant, at that particular instance of time, the charge will be equal to 0.63 times of its final charge value or Q0 value. So here also, since the final charge is equal to EC by 2, 0.63 times of that is 0.63 EC by 2, the time taken will be equal to new time constant. What is the new time constant now? Time constant is R into C, but new constant is now C has become C by 2. That's why it'll take. Now, this is still clear or still not uh, some doubt? Clear. Yes. Hmm? Okay. Now, let's look at this question and try to understand what it means. And all of you think in your mind and solve. Sir? Yes? It's kilo ohm, sir. Yes, this is kilo, kilo ohms. Okay, sir. Now we'll get some sense of means. Typically, when we talk about capacitor, very rarely capacitors have even millifarad. Most of the capacitors are microfarad. Very large capacitors only are millifarad. 
तो कैपेसिटर्स आर यूटिली ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ माइक्रो फेराड वेरस रेजिस्टेंस कैन बी किलो वेरी और इट कैन बी किलो ओम्स और इवन मोर देन दैट दिस इज नॉर्मली वेरी स्मॉल एंड दिस कुड बी लार्ज व्हाट इज चार्ज स्टोर्ड इन द फर्स्ट हर्ब व्हाट इट सेस इट हैज स्टोर्ड सम चार्ज इन फर्स्ट 5 सेकंड Can you just think, think of some of you think of this? How to find an answer to this question? What is five seconds? See, whenever we talk about time, we compare the time to time constant. Let's see five seconds. So, what is the time constant? This circuit also to understand how quickly the charging will take place or how slowly the charging will take place. I will understand in relation to time constant. Can I find time constant for this equation? This circuit here. What is time constant here? 500 मल्टीप्लाई रेजिस्टेंस एंड कैपेसिटर रेजिस्टेंस बेसिकली ऑल इन एसआई यूनिट बेसिकली नथिंग मच सो आरसी बेसिकली लेट्स फाइंड व्हाट इज द टाइम कांस्टेंट एंड दिस इज अ टिपिकल केस दिस इज नॉट एन एबनॉर्मल केस दिस इज अ टिपिकल केस ऑफ मोस्ट केसेस आईएस कैपेसिटर अ रियल कैपेसिटर वुड बी ऑफ दैट ऑर्डर हाउ मच दिस कम्स टू फाइव फाइव Seconds. Okay. So what does this mean? It has acquired some T charge. T goes to down. Huh? In 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 T, it has already acquired a charge. So if I draw the curve, something like this. So how can I draw this graph also? Something like this. Let's try and understand this question in terms of graph. This is T, and this is Q. So what is the time? Five second. Five second is here somewhere. Okay. And this is a large time constant. Five second. And uh, if the final charge is Q naught, it has acquired 0.63 Q naught in time five second. Charge point. This is one point on the charging graph. So I have I have marked one point corresponding to 0.63 times Q naught. And time constant down. It will pass through. The shape of the graph will be something like this. That's the shape of the graph. It will be larger than all the rest. Uh, like correct. See, since it has already acquired oh, more than half. whatever charge it has acquired in five seconds. If you wait for infinity, also the time charge acquired between five seconds and infinity also cannot exceed the charge acquired in five seconds. Yes, sir. That's what it means. So, by this case, actually, the time constant is very large. We have taken a very large resistance, and capacitor also is very large. Five hundred microfarad is very large, and this is very high value. It is much lower than. That. So, what we understand from here is most of the charge is acquired in the very initial time itself. Afterwards, yes, it, even if you wait for long time, will the charge increase substantially? No, it is greater than all. So, the charge to capacitor first second is larger than what? Charge stored in next five second. Charge stored next five next five second. Let's say charge stored in next five second. Five hundred next five hundred second also. There will be little load, but none of them is larger than the charge it has acquired in first five seconds. It is larger than all. The sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's try and solve this question. All based on one simple formula. This is the formula we are using. We are using the formula Q is equal to. We are. What are we trying to do? I am totally just trying to get familiar with the use of the formula. Is this okay? most cases what we need to do we need to most cases we need to find time in terms of multiples of time constant so in this question also what is the time constant here and what is the charge okay let's see let how do we find the resistance of the circuit so let's put those values in this equation so what is q equal to 2.6 microcoulomb. What is EC equal to? Q 
20 micro -cooler. What if this term comes equal to? Does it remind you of something? Yes, sir. Zero power and six a like a tau will be equals to t. Huh. So yes, time will be equal to t. So what is this charge here? This charge is nothing but 0.63 times. This comes equal to 0.63. What is 0.63? So whenever this comes to 0.63, I know that t is equal to tau. Basically, the tau value is known. What so, R into C will be 50 milliseconds. So, if I substitute here, this becomes 1 minus, uh, let me put this value also 1 minus T by 2. Or, T is equal to tau. Or, T is equal to, what is T equal to? 50 millisecond is equal to RC. And this is something those who are little clear want to do more step by step also. What you can do here e raised to power minus t by two. So, but we should take anti log and all right. And you just see that one. Let me see if you do is yeah. This is something I think is very clear. Is 0.63 it immediately should strike our mind. Otherwise, yes, it becomes you see many questions are anti log and kind of thing. Let's look at this. Blah, blah, blah. This comes equal to server. Okay. Thus, this 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 particular case, this how we can write. There's no need to take anti log. Are you following what I'm the what, what we have done here? Simple equation rearranged is 1.67. Sorry, what I've written, but this is equal to 0.37. One divided by 0.37 is equal to roughly what? 2.73. 2.73 is e to power one. So basically, t by tau t by t by tau is equal to one, or t is equal to two. And now we come to 50 millisecond is equal to rc. So 50 into 10 to power minus three. Is equal to R and C is given as 10 into 10 to power minus 6. What is R equal to? That's answer. Equal to ohms. Clear? Clear? Sir? Have you followed? Yes, sir. This is a okay. Hello? Yes, sir, I followed. So, okay. Most questions typically will come across question. Time will be given in terms of multiples of four. Okay. So this is really good. And this question also, uh, let's see how do we substitute an equation. And this kind of question, it cannot be solved without anti-log and all. But let's do it anyway. Uh, let's see what this question means and how we go about solving it. And this will give you understanding how much time does it take to acquire 99% of charge. If it is acquired 99% of charge, you can more or less say, okay, the charging is more or less complete. Afterwards, to acquire last 1% of charge, it may take infinite time. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, but 99%. Uh, so we let's try and understand this also a typical case, uh, but this is resistance to like a normal case we come across. How much time does it take? Okay, let's find out the time constant here. What is the time constant, which is easy part? Time constant easily we can find out. So time constant, this equation, unless you find out time constant, time constant is for RC, which comes equal to 200 microseconds. It's not even millisecond, 200 10 to power minus 6 or 0.2 milliseconds. That's a time constant. How do you find time it takes? Let's find to, uh, to acquire 99% charge. So what does this mean? This Q is equal to what? 99. Let's put this value. How would I how would I solve this question? It means 0.99 is equal to what? 1 minus 
e raised to power minus t by tau or e raised to power minus t by tau is equal to 1 by 100 1 by 100 or yes we can write as 1 by 100 1 by 100 or e raised to power t by tau is 100 or t by tau is equal to one one way of thinking would be log of 100 and log of 100 we don't know unless we have log table or other way of thinking of t by tau is equal to what t by tau uh, is equal to something 2.303 into 10 to the power uh, yeah so roughly what power i should raise it to so that it becomes roughly 100 so what if you have to just make approximate guess and why i'm asking approximate guess last year means there are two three questions have come which are based on you getting understanding of approximate value. We cannot calculate. So do you think what would be the range of X if I had to find in terms of some integer value? Should it be something like two or three or four or five? Four point something. Sir. Something like something near to four point. Four like, point. Is it not? So whenever I get an expression like this, it's possible to estimate and if options are given, in terms of x is equal to 2, x is equal to 5, x is equal to 7, I can eliminate those options. Okay, and if so, actually, if you calculate 90% charge, it comes equal to log of 100. Log of 100 is 4.6, and some of you have rightly guessed the number x is roughly 4.6. So, what does it mean? Any circuit will acquire 99% of its charge in time equal to roughly 4.6 of its time constant. Kartike? Kartike? I, I, is it true for all circuit? Yes, it is true for all circuit. And if so, what will be 4.5? It will be something like milliseconds. What is the time it takes for a typical capacitor to charge unless it is connected through a larger resistance? It will acquire its 99% of charge within order of milliseconds. Very quick, unless resistance is large. How so much time does it take? So this is something roughly, whether we don't have to memorize this one, but we get an idea to it takes a time less than five time constant to acquire 99% charge. Okay, so any circuit, if it is given, we get an idea, okay, roughly around this time, it acquires full charge. Okay, so, uh, so I'll stop here, and this is something what we have more than 90% charging is done within five time constant. So what we have done today, RC circuit and the uh, equation based on job loop rule, it comes as a differential equation. Integrate, we find the equation, this equation we arrive at. And uh, today we have a high tube, our today focus was to understand this equation, understand what is the time constant, how does it affect charging process, and uh, uh, what would the curve look like charging, what is the rate of charging. And tomorrow also, actually, this is the major part of this topic. This rest of the top, rest of the days also, we are going to use only this equation. In addition to this, sometimes the question may come, what happens at time t tending to zero? What happens time t tending to infinity? Next two days also, just the same thing. The two days, actually, are yeah, more than two days we have. So we have enough time to get used to this formula and get used to its application which will continue for next two days. Okay. Anybody has any other query? So those who have doubt, uh, anything else they want to clarify? 